Okay, friends, uh, we are going to talk today <clears throat> about uh, discrimination in healthcare. My name is uh, Professor Khalid Khan, and uh, I work at the University of Granada. I start by asking the question, what is the meaning of the word discrimination? Well, there are many synonyms. Unequal treatment is one, and there are others. And uh, today we are going to explore uh, what this means. The background is that uh, some years ago I had the opportunity to write an article about racial discrimination against minority health workers in women's health. And at that time I discovered that uh, compared to their white counterparts, colored doctors uh, were being treated unfavorably in appointments. Uh, they had greater disciplinary penalties against them. They were not represented in positions of authority. And those in training often claimed that uh, they were working in a climate of fear. And uh, a report by the King's Fund um, evaluating religious and uh, race-based classifications uh, was demonstrating that uh, the staff were living um, in a climate of concern about lack of inclusion. And therefore, I question that the subtitle diversity and inclusion should rather have been named diversity and a lack of inclusion in the UK National Health Service. As COVID uh, affected us all, it became clear that Asian healthcare worker mortality was higher in the UK setting. And uh, even they commenced with some uh, <clears throat> campaigns to to help topple racism in the National Health Service. And when the time came, the Guardian newspaper even uh, emphasized that uh, the National Health Service was being sustained by the migrant uh, healthcare uh, provider community rather than being drained by them. At that time, a key uh, consultant working uh, at the shop floor in women's health in the, in the UK National Health Service highlighted that as a black doctor, she felt the same way as the brutally murdered George Floyd in the USA and claimed that she couldn't breathe. Ethnic minority academics, uh, to my knowledge, uh, there had experienced uh, favoritism against them and in favor of uh, their white uh, colleague researchers. And those against whom uh, investigations in the medical regulatory profession were uh, being carried out also were more likely to be investigated. Well, as a researcher, I turned to writing a book concerning research integrity. And during the course of my research to undertake uh, this work, I came across allegations of uh, research misconduct against uh, people at the top positions in the USA. And here a news item from the Boston Globe asks the question whether Claudine Gay, who they claimed was railroaded over a research integrity allegation, was compared to her white counterpart treated differently. So all this background encouraged me to investigate further 
and uh, to produce this blog. In today's blog, I want to cover what is discrimination. Uh, I want to cover some scientific work I have undertaken in this area and present some work of others and explore the causes behind this problem. So let's start by looking at uh, a simple diagram where we correlate against uh, socioeconomic development the coverage of maternal and child health services. And here we see that in those amongst the higher quartile, there remains a gap in coverage for maternal and child health services. And the question is, why is this? And could this be the result of uh, some form of uh, inequality? So having addressed um, the background and raised the question, look at the worldwide picture concerning, concerning uh, intimate partner violence and a systematic review demonstrates that this is a prevalent problem. You might say, well, what has partner violence or uh, domestic violence got to do with healthcare? Well, it's an important topic because those afflicted by this issue have uh, quite severe uh, effect, negative effect on the perinatal outcome. But here, apart from showing the prevalence, we cannot show a comparison. Um, and I want to take this further to look at other examples uh, where we can understand better what discrimination in healthcare is. So first, let's look at the definitions as provided in uh, the various literatures. And one example from the Institute of Medicine in the USA refers to the presence of a difference, but in some circumstances, the presence in, of the difference in care may be appropriate. But when there are uh, barriers that are associated with the difference, with respect to regulatory or legal climate, or in or uh, or right in your face discrimination with respect to stereotyping or uh, other forms of biases, then that is where we start to become concerned about inequality and inequity. So, by definition, if a health organization treats some people according to a provision or criterion differently to others and causes a disadvantage uh, as a result, then that is inequity, inequality or discrimination. So what are these protected characteristics? Well, they may be race, religion, gender and other features. And when, for example, the protected characteristic is race, we might call it an act of racism. Going forward from here, let's look at gender and uh, do guidelines in healthcare bring about a discrimination? Well, a systematic review compares the recommendations for shared decision making in prostate cancer, which only affects men and uterine or endometrial cancer, which only affects women, and finds that the recommendation to share the decision-making in male cancer has a 47% rate of endorsement, whereas such a recommendation has only endorsement in around 15 or 16% for a female cancer, then you begin to wonder whether within the health system there is a form of discrimination in the guidelines with respect to shared decision making in cancer against women and in favor of men. Take another example. We take 
author gender in academic research and examine whether country development status is associated with higher prevalence of female authors. And in this scientific question, we find that female authors are more prevalent in higher, more developed countries compared to their underdeveloped counterparts. This also touches on the crystal or glass ceiling that we often refer to in academic careers uh, that works against uh, our female colleagues. Now let's turn directly to healthcare. Pregnancy and pregnancy outcome in the United Kingdom. Its, two, 20, its 2018 report demonstrates that black pregnant women compared to their white counterparts are five times at higher risk of mortality. And the same is repeated in the report next year. And an analysis published uh, in, a, in, in a blog associated with the British Medical Journal attributes this to endemic structural racism within the health service against ethnic minorities. Examine elder abuse and its prevalence. The worldwide literature demonstrates a high prevalence of this problem. And this is an example of uh, discrimination with respect to age. Examine migrants versus natives with respect to vaccine coverage. And here the gap in vaccination demonstrates that natives tend to have twice as much vaccination coverage as migrants an element of discrimination with respect to immigration status. Well, let's look at physician-patient language discordance. Here, a systematic review demonstrates that when there is concordance of language, i.e. the patient and the doctor speak the same language, compared to a situation where the doctor and patient do not speak the same language as might occur, in the case of a migrant patient seeking care from a native doctor, the health outcomes may be poorer. Moving on to mental health, which carries a stigma, there is a need to recognize that there is a need for education in the community so that this marginalized group does not face prejudice and discrimination as highlighted in this Cochrane review. So, looking at the examples of discrimination, maternal mortality in the UK, the protected characteristic affected over there is race. In elder abuse, the protected characteristic under attack is age. In patient doctor language discordance, Migration status uh, puts the recipient of care at risk. In mental health related stigma, marginalized communities are put at risk. And vaccination coverage in migrants related to, again, the immigration or migration status. So here we have many examples highlighting disparities and discrimination in healthcare. Let's look at what is the cause? Why does this happen? Well, here we see an image from celebration of a festival where a white status uh, symbol is associated with black painted characters. This type of cultural events known to happen every Christmas in Holland as highlighted in this news item have been criticized for brainwashing kids and subconsciously instilling a discriminatory attitude from the very early age. The Church of England itself 
admits to being deeply institutionally racist. And the royal family, which is the custodian of the church, the king uh, being the leader who appoints uh, the head of the Church of England, their family m recognizing that unconscious racism, as highlighted in the Times news item, is a key issue. And the George Floyd story reverberated across the globe with these images uh, published in the newspapers where slave trader statues were removed from outside a London museum and the home office in the UK itself uh, was urged to correct the false slave slavery history that it was including in its citizenship tests according to the Guardian newspaper. So taking all of this into account and trying to consolidate from this as to what might be our um, take home messages, we return to the summary provided by the Institute of Medicine concerning unequal treatment in healthcare. Here we see that these disparities that the existence of this, these disparities ought to be recognized uh, formally and that the historic and contemporary social and economic context ought to be understood. And it's only then that we can start to begin to tackle the stereotyping and prejudice that underpins the unequal treatment in healthcare. So what can be done? Well. Those who are disadvantaged are not empowered to bring about change. They are victims of discrimination. They are vulnerable. Those who are in a position of advantage are the ones who bear the responsibility to address and eliminate bias and prejudice. And although training program exists and there is a risk that they might use the explanation that unconscious bias uh, legitimizes the presence of the bias, um, then there's a need to go forward. The idea is to take the perspective of the target groups for whom we want to bring about change, for whom we want to eliminate discrimination, and take their position and think about how we would be treated if we were in their place seeking health care. Well, when we take this attitude, we open the possibility of bringing about change and uh, addressing the issue of unequal treatment of uh, biased against marginalized communities and give protection to those whose characteristics are protected by the law in most countries. And with this important message, I would like to bring this video to an end. And I hope you will be able to comment with your own views as to what you think about this issue and how do you think this problem should be tackled. Thank you.